Thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about our research results. I will speak today on behalf of Professor Gabor Juhas, the head of our lab in, uh, in National Art University in Budapest, Hungary, at Laboratory of Proteomics. So uh, my studies are, uh, are covering uh, proteomic studies. So I will be talking about pro proteomic studies mostly. And our research focus is recently on uh, the connection between mitochondrial function and, and synapse elimination uh, with special emphasis on complement mediated synapse elimination and, and Alzheimer's disease and its role in Alzheimer's disease. Um, first of all, allow me to start with a brief introduction to, to the phenomenon of synapse elimination. So it's, uh, it's also termed as synaptic pruning. It's the, it's, it's, it is the process where uh, supernumerary or damaged synapses are removed in the central nervous system. Uh, synapses can be formed uh, here at the dendritic spines or at, uh, at uh, the uh, um, cell bodies or can be take place at the, at the axonal buttons and, uh, and certain um, phagocytes in the brain like uh, microglial cells or and to lesser extent, and extent uh, astrocytes can phagocytose these synapses. It has um, implications for, um, for the developmental elimination of synapses in the brain. Um, in health, it, it is a critical process when, uh, when supernumerary synapses have to be removed. And also in the adult brain, synaptic plasticity is, is crucial because it, uh, it uh, facilitates the plasticity of the brain. However, uh, when it, it goes wrong, um, it can influence, it, it can uh, precipitate uh, the development of several uh, diseases, like developmental diseases like schizophrenia or autism spectrum disorders. And the burn and synaptic pruning is also involved in the mature brain, where it, uh, it, is, it is involved in the development of uh, schizophrenia as well. And uh, our research focus is on, as I said before, is on Alzheimer's disease. And it is known that pathologically upregulated synapse elimination is a hallmark of, of uh, Alzheimer's disease. Um, it is also known for about a decade, uh, since about a decade, that complement mediated synapse loss is a hallmark of, of the early stage of Alzheimer's disease. So it is known that Alzheimer's disease is highly relies on, on first on synapse elimination and then on uh, neuronal degeneration and, and the loss of, of uh, neuronal cells. And uh, it is known that, uh, that the complement system in the brain has a, has a huge ro role in it. The complement system is, uh, is known as an innate immune component in the periphery in the immune system, but uh, it is known that it is also uh, localized into the brain where it helps to remove the uh, synapses. And, uh, and in this model, which was, uh, which was published uh, last year in Science by Hong et al., it was shown that synaptically localized amyloid beta oligomers, the toxic oligomid, uh, amyloid beta oligomers, are able to upregulate the synaptic uh, deposition of complement components like C1Q. C1Q is the first element of the classical pathway of the complement system. It is the recognizing element of the complement system. And after synaptic C1Q deposition, there is a consequential deposition of C3, another complement element. And this process ultimately leads to the microglial phagocytosis of these particular synapses, which are, which are tagged with these complement components. And most importantly, complement-mediated synaptic pruning precedes uh, the occurrence of severe neuronal degeneration and inflammation in Alzheimer's disease brain. So it is, it is a uh, huge, uh, it is an important uh, point. And our studies, uh, the question of our study was mainly uh, how does the synaptic mitochondrial proteome contribute to, the, to this A-beta induced and complement mediated synaptic pruning. So in our studies we focus mostly on the synaptic compartment and, uh, and uh, more specifically on the synaptic mitochondrial compartment and we've done studies at the level of the, of the uh, proteome. In the first study um, we wanted to get a better insight into the uh, effects of A-beta accumulation on the proteome of the synaptic mitochondria. Therefore we performed uh, 2D digi proteomic study. In this uh, technique, we used uh, different, uh, uh, we, we used the gel based uh, proteomic technique comprising isoelectric focusing and, uh, and then separation of proteins by mass and the subsequential identification of proteins with altered levels. 
and we tracked the proteomic changes in the synaptic mitochondria at three time points, the, and the three, the six, and the nine months of age group uh, of EPPPS on mice. So as, as uh, we heard before, the EPPPS on mice is a transgenic mice model uh, with Alzheimer's disease like phenotype, con with cognitive dysfunctions and E beta plaque accumulation and so on. And, uh, and we wanted to know how the E beta accumulation affects particularly the synaptic mitochondria and therefore we used the 2D digit proteomic study and, and the subcellular fractionation technique to isolate specifically the synaptic, mito uh, synaptic mitochondria. And uh, surprisingly we found that almost all of the mitochondrial functions are affected at, uh, at these time points. Uh, to name a few, the response machinery to the oxidative stress, the tricarboxylic acid cycle, even the ketone body metabolism, and, uh, and almost all of all elements of the electron transport chain were affected by E beta accumulation. And we found that uh, two proteins uh, showed, uh, which showed the, the, the highest level change in our study, called ETHA1 and HTRA2 proteins, shown a strange dynamics uh, in, in the expression level, as they shown uh, a decrease in the three months of age group, an increase in the six months of age group, and, and also a decrease in the nine months of age group. And these proteins are not just interesting because they've shown a really outstanding expression level change, but these proteins are known as uh, proteins influencing the intrinsic mitochondrial apoptotic pathway. So uh, we claim that uh, in, in, this, in this mice model, in the EPPPS1 transgenic mice model, there is an implication for for the uh, mitochondrial intrinsic apoptotic pathway. This was uh, suggested uh, by uh, bioinformatics analysis using protein network model modeling. So in the first study, we found that uh, almost uh, a lot of uh, mitochondrial processes are affected uh, due to a beta accumulation and uh, the widespread changes are present at, at all of the time points we, we investigated. And uh, most strikingly, we found um, profound changes at the three months of age mice group where, uh, where no cognitive dysfunctions are present actually in this, in this mice model. So mitochondrial functions, dysfunctions, precede uh, the, uh, the occurrence of cognitive, cognitive dysfunctions in Alzheimer's disease, uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this Alzheimer's disease model. We also find uh, that two apoptosis-associated proteins are affected and, uh, and uh, we found implica uh, implications for the intrinsic mitochondrial apoptosis, uh, apoptotic pathway in this E beta-induced synaptic dysfunction. In the next study, uh, we wanted to focus on the complement-mediated synapse elimination. As I said before, there is an enhanced uh, complement-mediated synapse loss. And this is a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease in this, uh, in this process there is a um, complement activation at, at, at the surface of certain uh, synapses, but not at other ones. And, uh, and this, pro uh, this, this process is highly relies on the recognizing molecule, molecule called C1Q. So we focused on, on C1Q molecule, molecule and we wanted to, uh, to get a better insight the rules behind C1Q tagging of synapses. So first of all, we verified the presence of C1Q protein in the homogenate of murine synaptosomes. So we prepared synaptosomes from the, from the brains, uh, from the cerebral cortices of, uh, of mice. We uh, also found C1Q in the, in the homogenate of mice after transcardial perf perfusion. So there is no, uh, not a uh, blood contamination uh, which, which we found in this, uh, in this study. You also find that C1Q colocalized with the synaptic marker synaptophysin, and the C1Q was also present in the synaptosome fraction of, uh, um, of uh, different cortical areas from, from human subjects as well. We wanted to know in more detail uh, which part of the synapse where C1Q is attached to. Therefore, we utilized the um, fractionation technique to separate uh, the pre- and the post-synaptic part of the synapse. So there, uh, this is an electrograph, uh, electromicrograph of the synaptosome fraction uh, showing a synaptosome, an intact synaptosome. And after the subcellular fractionation technique, uh, we uh, obtained the synaptic junction fraction containing the postsynaptic part and the presynaptic part of the synapse. And after additional uh, steps, we obtained uh, the postsynaptic part and separately the presynaptic part of the synapse. 
uh, we verified the efficacy of, of the separation as uh, we found that the exclusively postsynaptic protein PSD95 was only present, almost exclusively present in the postsynaptic fraction, while the mostly presynaptic protein called synap synaptophysin was, was almost exclusively present in the presynaptic fraction, and we found that C1Q is actually present in the, in the presynaptic fraction. So binding partners of C1Q at the synapse uh, might be uh, particularly in the presynaptic part of the synapse. Uh, we wanted to, to separate and compare the proteome of C1Q tagged and untagged synaptosomes. Therefore, we utilized the fluorescence activated synaptosome sorting procedure. During this procedure, uh, we found that the synaptosome fraction contains a homogeneous fraction of synaptosomes based on their size and inner complexity. The synaptosomes are are almost uh, completely labeled with the viability dye casein uh, acetoximethylase store, so they are viable. And, uh, synap and the intact synaptosomes can be, can be purified after the, uh, after the sorting procedure as well. So synaptosomes were uh, separated based on, based, on the, based on their fluorescent tag. And uh, here is a, is a picture of, of, uh, of the flow cytometry experiment. And we verified the high efficacy of, uh, of the separation of C1Q tagged and untagged synaptosomes, as we found C1Q protein only in the C1Q tagged fraction of synaptosomes, but not in the untagged ones. So we compared the proteome of the C1Q tagged synaptosomes and the untagged ones uh, using the aforementioned 2D digit technique. Here's a representative GIL image. Uh, after after uh, of the study, and we found the alteration in 18 in the level of 18 proteins shown here. And after functional classification, we found numerous cellular functions which are affected by C1Q tagging. So numerous cellular functions actually are impaired in the removable synapse. We found the potential down regulation of synaptic transmission as uh, errors are facing down in this uh, slice, uh, potentially up regulation of, up of energy metabolism. And interestingly, we found the down regulation of neuronal pentroxin 1. Here it is. Uh, this protein is, is uh, particularly important because this is a shuttling protein between the synaptic mitochondria and the extracellular space. So it can be attached to the uh, synaptic mitochondria and can be secreted to the extracellular space. It is also known as, a, uh, as it is also proposed actually as a regulatory protein of the complement system, as it has um, it has uh, it, it it contains a pentroxin domain and pentroxins in the periphery are known uh, are well known complement regulatory elements, and it is known that NPTX1 influences uh, apoptosis as well. So here are the cellular localization of proteins which are uh, which are identified in our study. And we focused on neuronal pentroxin 1. We first verified the presence of NPTX1 in the synaptosome fraction, obviously. And we were uh, curious about how is it possible that we found a complement-related protein to be downregulated in a complement-tagged synapse. And we speculated that uh, maybe post-translational modifications underlie, underlied uh, this phenomenon. And indeed, we've, we uh, found that NPTX1 has as uh, several post-translationally uh, modified forms using uh, 2D Western blot technique. And we also verified that uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, spots are actually uh, the phosphorylated, differentially phosphorylated uh, forms of NPTX, NPTX1. We also interested in, we, we also uh, wanted to know which part of the synapse where NPTX1 is localized to, and we found that in contrary to C1Q, NPTX1 is mostly localized to the postsynaptic part of the synapse. And um, it was um, proposed before that NPTX1 might be a C1Q uh, binding partner because pentroxins are known uh, C1Q binding partners in the periphery. And actually, we, we confirmed this, this, uh, this theoretical uh, statement. And we, uh, as we found that uh, using confocal microscopy and flow cytometry experiments, that uh, C1Q and NPTX1 shows a high, high uh, colocalization. So we can uh, put uh, NPTX1 in the C1Q tag synapse, where there is a, a certain, certainly a mitochondrial pool of NPTX1, but there is also a postsynaptically localized pool of NPTX1 as well. And, um, and the rules behind, behind, this, uh, behind the transport of, 
of this protein are yet unknown, but we, but we suggest that maybe the phosphorylation of the NPTX1 is a, is a, is a huge factor behind, this, behind, this behind the transport. We wanted to uh, get a better insight into the C1Q, uh, C1Q tagging of Synapse, so we performed functional analysis uh, using bioinformatics tools, and we found that uh, actually apoptosis was the, most was the second most probable target of all of the altered proteins. And uh, the first one was synaptic plasticity, which was not surprising. And we also found that uh, calcium uh, ion was the most probable regulator of all of the proteins. And calcium ion is also known as a second messenger and a, and a, a potent regulator of apoptosis. We wanted to uh, verify this uh, this phenomenon, this bioinformatic uh, result experimentally. So we used flow cytometry, uh, we, we uh, employed flow cytometry experiments, and we found that C1Q was, uh, was uh, highly co-localized with apoptotic markers, cleave caspase 3 and then Xtin5. So we can say that uh, the C1Q tech synapse is, is uh, uh, underwent apoptosis. And in the third study, we wanted to merge the first studies, the, fir the, the uh, first two studies, and we wanted to compare the proteome of the C1Q tech synapses uh, between the Y type and the EPPPS1 mice. So uh, we wanted to know the differences between the pathological C1Q tagging and the, and the C1Q tagging under, under physiological circumstances, and we found that. Uh, that actually there are several proteins which are affected in the EPPPS1 mice. So C1Q tagging uh, in the EPPPS1 uh, mice model is, is certainly different from the, white, uh, from the, from the um, uh, physiological C1Q tagging. And most strikingly, we found the general downregulation of all of the mitochondrial proteins found in the study in the, in the EPPPS1 mice model. So, so synapse uh, uh, removal by the C1Q, uh, by the, by the complement system due to A-beta accumulation is high, highly relies on a mitochondrial if, uh, dysfunction and, uh, and the downregulation of several mitochondrial proteins. And we also wanted to get a better insight uh, into the pathological C1Q tagging. Therefore, we used bioinformatics analysis and we found that uh, the most probable target of all of the proteins found in our study was uh, hydrogen peroxide with a very low p-value. And, um, and we can suggest that oxidative stress underlies the pathological uh, C1Q tagging. We also find, found uh, an interesting uh, mitochondrial protein called prohibitin. Prohibitin has many implications for, de for the defense against oxidative stress. It has mitochondrial functions and apoptotic functions. It's implicated in aging and Alzheimer's disease. It's, it can influence the complement activation and synaptic plasticity. So it, is a, it could be a target uh, to, uh, to improve the cognitive functions in, in, uh, in, the, in this uh, mice model and we can put oxidative stress in the c one synapse uh, due to A-beta accumulation. And to summarize our results, A-beta accumulation influenced uh, the synaptic mitochondria. It profoundly uh, affected the mitochond synaptic mitochondria. It elicited the intrinsic mitochondrial apoptotic pathway. And um, on the other hand, the complement mediated synaptic pruning highly upregulated the energy metabolism in parallel with the downregulation of synaptic transmission. And um, we found implications for local synaptic apoptotic mechanisms in the C1Q tag synapse. And we also found that the aberrant, the pathological C1Q tagging, which might uh, uh, underlie the, the synapse elimination of Alzheimer's disease, is relies on the downregulation of key mitochondrial proteins and, and uh, it, it relies on oxidative stress. And I have to acknowledge all of the, uh, all of the people uh, um, who helped in this work. First of all, Gabor Juhász, Katalin Kékesi, and Katalin Völgyi from Laboratory of Proteomics, uh, members of the Neuroimmunology Research Group, József Kardos, Eva Bujak, Judith Konréka Kovács, and András Michonai, members of the Neuroproteomics Research Group, László Drahos, Péter Gulyási, and Department of Immunology, János Matko, and, Department of Anatomy, uh, and Victor Kish from Department of Anatomy, Cell and Developmental Biology. And thank you for your attention.